Daniel, to start with, we learned from our Scoop King yesterday, Pete O'Rourke, that Celtic's main priority in this transfer window is going to be a striker. They're also looking at a goal-scoring centre mid and potentially a left winger as well. Nevertheless, of course, a, a striker is the priority. From a fan perspective, how is that feeling? W would a striker going into this window be top of your list? I think it has to be. Um, I think we're looking, you know, at the Asian Cup coming up very, very quickly. We know already this morning that... Um, all is has been called up by South Korea, um, as we would have expected. Um, there's a very high chance that Kyogo will also be called up by Japan. It's not a certainty. You know, he didn't go to the World Cup last year, um, which was a big surprise, despite him being in, you know, incredible form. His form has obviously not quite been there this year. Um, but it's pretty clear that we will be down at least one striker and possibly two. So I think it has to be a priority. Um, and even without... a the Asian Cup thing hanging over Brendan Rodgers' head. Uh, I think either way, most fans would agree that another striker needs to come in just to take a bit of the heat off of Kyogo, off of O as well, who I think has um has been has been decent, um, but he's nowhere near the finished article. Uh, so I think that that has to happen. Um, and you know, it's it's up now to the club to try and get get the right the right guy in to to help O. And I'm saying take the and Kyogo. And I'm saying to take the heat off the strikers, but also take, to take heat off players like Matt O'Reilly, who's had a, who's a really has had a really good goal scoring season, you know. And it's great that there are goals coming from from midfielders. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's so important to get someone in, um, and it needs to be the right guy. I think most fans would would hope that it's not going to be um, a sort of project signing, if that's how you want to put it, as it's maybe been a bit too much, particularly with the summer signings. See, Fra Frank's absolutely fed up with project signings. What are your thoughts, Frank, about that priority striker position? Well, I think I think he's right. It's definitely got to be with with the fact that the boys have could there's a chance the two of them could be away, um, which would leave Brendan with with absolutely nothing. Um, I think O is a project. Um, I think he's not by nowhere near the finish that because he's a good goal scorer, but we need someone that can either run in. Rose not most doesn't do the running in behind like Kyogo does. And he hasn't, he likes to get a tussle, but he just can't hold the ball up. You know, he loves a tussle, but he doesn't seem to hold it much. So, um, he's, listen, he's only a young kid, he will learn. But we need some, we, we don't need any more projects. We need someone to come in, walk in and say, let us go to 20 goals, because that could, if, if Kyogo's out and goes to the, the Asian Cup, then, then unfortunately, if somebody comes in and starts going goals, then that's their place. Um, I feel for Kyogo this year because we've not created chances for him and now in the last couple of weeks there's been a couple of chances and that's lack of confidence. Um, the goal last week was done with Walter Good. Uh, unfortunately, we just I just think we're, we're not creating enough chances. You were talking about an attacking goal scorer in midfield. We've got enough of them. We need someone to sit in midfield who when the play breaks down we can stop it. Um, we don't have anyone in there. We've got O'Reilly's Quite rightly, we're talking about him scoring goals and, and he's up there, but you know, McGregor's up there dictating play. Once we lose the ball, people when, and teams are attacking us now, there's no one sitting in midfield. Everyone, even Greg Taylor's up centre forward. I mean, it's you, you need to be aware of some teams are used to Celtic playing now and and they're going to attack and where Greg leaves it. And you need a centre midfield player. We've not had anyone since Scott Brown. Before him, it was Neil Lennon. You need someone in there who has got, for me anyway, that's what I think. Um, I said, obviously, it's only my opinion, but I think that's the main priority. Um, and I would say, you know, if you're maybe not January, but I think we need a centre half, a good centre half. I, I mean, Scales has done wonders, but you come up against the good teams and we are found wanting. And um, and I need we need. Someone that skills just give you a hundred percent. He's got this, you know, never say die attitude. But sometimes you need that quality, and and a team like Celtic should have quality all round the all round the pitch. We've got a lot of prospects that could be quality, but <laughs> but when when are they going to be ready? So um, I, need, I think we need four players to come in now. Um, ready made players, not projects. Players that are going to come in and they can step into the team and stay in the team and let everyone else fight for their place, because I think we need that, I really do. I think we need a keeper as well, Joe Hart's a great keeper, but I think 
make a lot of mistakes. But then all of a sudden you're playing against Fairnod, he pulls out about six unbelievable saves. So I just, but and I, on a day to day and you know a game to game, I don't think he's he can do it now. He's he's getting on, but I think I would. We spoke about it before. I would give him another contract to to sit and, and fight for the number one spot. But I'd get a number one in because the boys that are there are not for me. They're not good enough. The other keepers. And Daniel, from a from a fan perspective, again, two of the names on the list that Pete identified was Fabio Silva on loan in the window and potentially Bojan Miovski, which is, he's been spoken about for quite a while, though more more difficult move by the sounds of that. It'd be permanent. It sounds like it might be a bit of a challenge to do. It sounds like it could happen in the summer, though. Out of those two, who would you prefer going forwards? I think in, in January, it sounds like it might have to be potentially Fabio Silva, but long term, who would you rather of those two? I think Fabio Silva is a good prospect, um, but I do think, again, that the slight issue with that, although I don't have a massive problem with his using a loan in January to sort of cover the potential situation, that, like we said, of having Kyogo and O both away on in international duty, um, you know, it's a good option and could see through to the end of the season. I'm a big fan of Miofsky. I think he's been fantastic for Aberdeen. Um, he's got a very strong goal scoring record, not just domestically, but also in Europe. You know, he's got a couple of goals in the conference league this season for Aberdeen. And they came up against some really good opposition in, in their group. Um, it's a very, very difficult group. Um, you know, Eintracht Frankfurt were there, who they beat, of course, in the last group match, who won the Europa League just two years ago. And we all know who they won it against. Um, so, you know, this is good opposition. Um, but I think Majowski, um brings something different. I can understand though why it would be a very difficult deal to do. Um, it's not going to be cheap, and neither should it be. Um, Aberdeen clearly value him highly. He's, you know, a striker who's produced, you know, some really big moments for them. You only have to look back to the uh, League Cup semi final when he scored that goal on the break against Hibs. You know, in a game where Aberdeen were probably not necessarily outplayed, um, but they, you know, were dominated by Hibs and managed. <clears throat> to take that one chance that they got. You know, Miofsky also scored a couple of goals against Rangers as well. He's a big game player, so I think he would be a good addition. And as I say, he's proven domestically in the league that he can score the goals. But as like you said, it's a difficult one. So it, it's a difficult one to, to weigh up as to who would be better. I think Miofsky would be a great option. But um, it's, again, as I say, it's not surprising that it's a difficult one um, because I think you're probably talking upwards of at least five million to get him in January, um, because Aberdeen would then have to go out and um, replace him. They've got Sockler and they've got Duke, but they don't score the goals uh, nearly at the level um, that um, that Miofsky does. Um, so Miofsky would be a great option. If Celtic could get that deal done, I think it's worth going for. Frank, what are your thoughts? Would you like to see Fabio Silva brought in on loan or would you rather them go out for Miofsky? Listen, Celtic's a big club. They shouldn't be worrying about four or five months when you're buying a striker who's guaranteed goals yeah. let's be honest we can score goals they can score that amount of goals for Aberdeen the amount of score for Celtic would be phenomenal I think um, with the players no disrespect to Aberdeen but there's better players um, at Celtic and uh, I just think it would be great when you go out you're getting a ready-made player uh, as Daniel says he scored in, in Europe he's scoring domestically for fun I just, you know, I think you'll get him for four and a half. I, I think just go out and spend the money, you know, and, and let him and Kyogo and let Kyogo fight for the place and let O learn off the two of them. And and then, you know, somewhere down the line, I think O could be one, one hell of a player might take the two of them. Um, but as I say, O is a prospect, you know, get Mayoski in, I, I wouldn't mind because he's he's proven that he can score goals at any level. So um, I'd, be, I'd be quite happy with that. Frank, say, you know, Miofsky does come in. If you're Brendan Rogers, are you tempted to try him and Kyogo as a pairing, or do you think Brendan is always going to stick quite rigidly to the, that front three that, that, to be fair, Ange did as well? I think I think you've got to be... It's games for courses, isn't it? I think it's Celtic Park when you're playing against, you know, you're no disrespect, your mother was just in Munns and all that. You, you go with two up front, I mean... Just frightening the life out of teams. We're used to that. We don't miss passing about. To be fair, the other night there was uh, against Andy was was a lot better than what it's been. It was it was you know the, it was a bit sharper. It was everything was done quicker. Um, and it, the intensity was there for ninety minutes. It's not been there for a while, so I'm quite happy with that. But yeah, I would play two up. It's just especially when you're needing 
needing goals, you know, I don't see why they don't. They fling it on the last 10 minutes, Daniel, so why would they not just start with two and say, here, we're going to cause you a problem? Right from the off. And I, and I don't see why we don't. But to do that, you've got somebody that's going to sit in midfield again. But I'm talking about that holding midfield because there's no way that O'Reilly's going to sit because he loves going forward. And, you know, and the, the other boys, well, we'll see what happens. I think the other boys, you know, there's a couple of boys that done all right but the other night there. But I think that's as we were talking about projects. And can they come in and play every game, 90 minutes every game? I don't think so. And the other, the other big piece of news, Frank, from, from Pete is that Matt O'Reilly is going to stay at Celtic in January, although there's going to be major interest coming in in the summertime. How much of a relief is that really, given that, you know, he's, he's leading the charge in terms of the midfield and, and he has been, I think, without doubt, probably arguably, one of the best players in the Scottish Premiership this season? Well, what he's, what he's done is he's put goals to it. No, he didn't do that last year. You know, he's got a couple, he's putting a lot of goals and, and he's up for, he's, Basically playing as that just off his acres, and um, you know, and that's why I keep going back to it. So it's not, it's not really. I'd love to keep him. Um, I don't think Celtic will, will let him go to to just anyone. I think the deal's going to be, you know, Celtic are like they're, you know, they're not, they're not selling anyone cheap. So I don't know um, if the money will come in from that uh, at this moment in time. De- definitely not January anyway. Um, Unfortunately, Celtic's a selling club like everyone else. If somebody comes in and offers the price that Celtic think he's worth, whether it's January or whether it's the summer, I think he'll go. Because that's the way Celtic are. Um, and they'll bring somebody in again, and, and it's another project. But that's what I mean. If you bring four players in, it's ready-made. You know, Lewis, I, I think we, we need that as a club to move forward. Just Not just for domestic, but get them ready for Europe next year. Because it's been embarrassing the last couple of years. They've fought hard and it's not been good enough. That you know, sometimes you get injuries and the players that are coming in don't want to talk about any players, but some of the players that are coming in are just not on the level as the players that have been injured. And we've been found we've been found wanting. So um we need a good squad. We need a squad that can do it for Europe and for domestic and You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.